Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at the JF17 Thunder which will be out in DCS in just a few days. Now it's really come under the carpet, at least for me. It hasn't been, you know, shouted about and, and we haven't had lots and lots of videos all over the place like we have with the F-16 from WAGS and whatnot. Uh, so I've more or less ignored it, but it's time to face up to facts. It's coming out, we're going to have to buy it, we'll get it done. So it's time to learn about it. So let's start in Wikipedia. We're going to miss all the spiel, you can uh, read that if you want. The first thing we should say is it was developed by China and Pakistan. And it's in use with, standby. Uh, just Pakistan, I believe. Well, what we've got here is we've got Myanmar, which I can never say, Burma, uh, 16 on order, 3 on order for Nigeria, and just Pakistan, 100 plus units in service at the moment. And just how would we describe this as a lightweight single engine export fighter? Yeah, I guess yeah I guess. It's, a, it's a bit like the Gripen, a bit like the F-16, a bit like the Mirages. It's a very modern plane. And there, are, there are different versions. So if I look at the blocks, we've got block one, block two, block three here now as i understand it we've got block one with a bit of block two tech in it so block 1.5 people have been saying anecdotally do we are we happy with that and they said uh, because only the block two ones can enter where we fuel we will get that uh, at some stage after it is a modern fighter certainly it was 2006 2007 the very first ones came out so this is really the most recent modern fighter we've got in dcs isn't it guys yeah, I was very surprised that they, they did that. Right, so let's have a little look at the characteristics just to see where we are kinematically then. So we're going to punch it up against an F-16, one of the F-16C variants. It's not really going to matter. So the length, it is basically the same as the F-16 in terms of length. Wingspan, it is basically the same wingspan. It's a foot shorter. Height, it is... Basically the same height, six inches shorter. Wing area. There's a pattern here. <laughs> yeah, funny that, isn't it? Wing area, it is, if we jump to metric, it is three and a half meters squared less. So it does have less wing area. I'm not sure exactly how that's measured, if you're measuring pure wing or or the blend or whatnot. But uh, empty weight is where it starts differing here. We've got 14 and a half thousand pounds for the 17. And we've got um, just a shade under 19 thousand pounds for the falcon so you know you're, you're five thousand pounds different there so the f-16 is a lot heavier for whatever reason even though it's more or less the same size which is interesting max takeoff weight of the jf i'm just going to call it the 17 because i'm going to have i've got so many numbers in my head is twenty seven thousand pounds or thereabouts maximum maximum takeoff weight of the f-16 is forty two thousand pounds that's that's much more weight the F-16 can carry, whether that's because it's got more pylons, it can carry a bigger bombs, I don't know. For whatever reason, it can carry much more stuff. Fuel capacity, this must be internal, is about £7,000 internal on the 16 and £5,000 internal on the 17. So it's going to have not very much power, but probably a more efficient engine. For the JF-17, we've got a power plant of a climb of RD-93, uh, modern turbofan, and it's got, uh, with the afterburner on, 19, just over 19,000 uh, pounds of thrust and 11,000 pounds of thrust um, without the afterburner, as opposed to the uh, 129 we've got in DCS for 16, just check I'm recording, and I am, with 17,000 pounds of thrust um, and just under 30,000 pounds. So we did a quick, if we do a look, quick look at power to weight ratio, and in, I know this is perfect conditions, you can never actually fly like this, but so uh, 14, uh, sorry, uh, 19,200 divided by 14,520. So without any fuel in and whatnot, we've got 1.32 for the JF-17, and for the F-16, 9588 divided by, come on, uh, 18900 is 1.56. So you've got about 15% better power to weight ratio. I think that works out in the F-16. Uh, However, that's not too bad. Mac 1.6. Now, that is presumably on purpose, limited, I guess, presumably due to intake design, something like that, because in terms of kind of power to weight, it should be going a lot faster. Max speed of the F-16 is Mach 2, it says here. So it's significantly less than the F-16. Um, I don't really know the reason for that. So if you do know, let me know. Service ceiling, 55,000 feet, which is quite high for a little plane like that. And Falcon, 
Uh, max ceiling is 50,000 feet, so it actually goes higher than the Falcon. That's interesting, maybe because it's lighter. G limits, plus 8 and minus 3, whether it has an override or not. Does anyone know if it has a, uh, a G override to go to 9 plus? So we just don't know. There's a, there's a lot of information we just can't get a hold of. G limits on the F-16 is 9, so you've got a bit of a bonus there for the F-16. We've got that extra G, which is going to help, and I'm certainly hoping the dogfight. Uh, thrust to weight ratio is measured differently to how I measure it, but again, about 15% or so more in the F-16. Uh, wing loading uh, is important. Uh, wing loading of 88 pounds per square foot in the F-16. Do we have a wing loading here? My apologies, we don't have a wing loading, and it's not important enough to go and measure it, so that's how it is. Right, that's where we're getting rid of the ending the kinematics. Next, let's go on to... So what we found out so far is it's a bit like a mini F-16 with about 30% less carrying power and about 15% less kinematics power and um, a lot less speed. Not that it really matters. These speeds really are completely superfluous anyway. They don't actually mean anything once you start putting weapons on them. So armament, guns. So we've got an, uh, a Mike 61, 20 mil Gatling gun on the F-16. Here we've got two times uh, 23 mil GSH 232. So I think I think that's the gun on the um, come on brain the frog foot the SU 25. I stand to be corrected. If it is, it's like a, um, a rotor gun, um, and they they're very powerful, but they're not scatter cannons like the M61. Personally, I prefer scatter cannons. I don't know what you guys think, but obviously these uh, these shells carry more weight with them. Uh, this is more of an accurate gun, I would say, uh, especially against air to ground. Uh, superior gun i would say hard points seven in total uh four under the wing two wing tip one fuselage is that the same as f-16 it is isn't it really no technically you get two extra chins on the on the on the f-16 for a pod so i suppose we get slightly more on the f-16 bear in mind this is wikipedia and this is not going to be the same weapons as what we've got on the uh, dcs version we will be looking at the weapons that we get on the dzs version and comparing it to this but let's just start having a look at some weapons from here uh, to kick us off in fact now we're going to scratch that i'm going to do it a different way what i'm going to do guys is get the okay so this is from the decker the uh, jf17 forum private forum so we think this here is for the dcs model uh, of what can be carried on what pylon so we've got the pl5 e2 which is, ping, uh, find it, which is the, what we call, uh, am I equivalent of a Sidewinder? Am I allowed to say that, guys? Yep. You can see everything looks fairly similar in terms of ranges, fuse, uh, warhead, uh, overall weight and whatnot. So it's going to be the equivalent of our EO-guided Sidewinder. Okay. Anyone know? It must be China that developed that, right? I'm almost certain it will be China. And resembles an aimline side wonder, yeah. So that's called a Thunderbolt. Looks like just wingtips, to be honest. Negative. Wingtips and... Uh, so pylons 1, 7, 2, and 6, we can have the... I'm just going to call them Chinese side wonders because there are so many names in my head right now. Okay, that's that. Next, we're going to uh, skip to pylons 2 and 6, and we can carry the SD-10. Um, I've been told this is a bit like a Chinese AMRAM. So if we want to have a look at that, I'm going to go there, SD-10A, Beyond Visual Range Missile. It looks very much different to an AMRAM, a lot thicker. But uh, in terms of uh, its kinetic ability, we've been told, well, it is here, it's considered comparable to the AIM-120 AMRAM and the R-77, that's the one. We get both of these FOX-3 fully active missiles. FOX-3 means that they've got their own onboard radar. Uh, we get both of these in DCS, and we've been told anecdotally that the performance of the PL-12 is going to be, uh, this is, the we believe, the Chinese name for it, uh, between the AMRAM and the R-77, uh, which is... Uh, how it is so that's a good quality modern missile range here you've got to be really skeptical about ranges because they mean different things in so many different but that range there roughly equates to about an aim 120 c or something like that uh, but it remains to be seen okay guys next we've got some bombs so let me just get this right i'm not sure which is which here it doesn't seem to specify but what we know is we've got mark 82s uh, 500 pound dumb slick bombs we also know we've got mark 83s 1000 pound slick bombs dumb and mark 84 dumb 2000 pound slick bombs we've got mark 20 rock eye which is if you like an unguided um submunition uh, dispenser cluster bomb 
Uh, guys, I think rock eyes are for unarmored or low armored targets, aren't they? They're, uh, from memory, I'm pretty sure they are. Um, I don't think they're an anti tank type weapon. So we can carry them. Then we've got the first of the guided air to ground weapons. We've got GBU 12, GBU 16, so these are literally the same ones, you know, the uh, American NATO style. And GBU 10, I think the GBU 10 are 2,000 pounds. And we've got the 16, 12, so different poundages. Of, and these are laser guided bombs. And these will be able to be lased by third party JTACs or aircraft. Or we've got our own targeting pod, which we'll go and have a look at in a minute. We've also got an interesting one here, a GB500. We believe this is also a laser guided bomb at 500 kilos, so about, about 1,000 pounds. Why that's here? Uh, I don't really know. If anyone knows, let me know. Uh, or if you think I've got that wrong, let me know. Next, um, we get to some really interesting stuff. We're going to go on these pylons here, and so we can carry six of these, the LS6. Let's go and have a look at that here. So this is what we would say the equivalent of a JSAL. It's a GPS INS guided terminal weapon. And this little guy here even looks a bit like a JSAL. The wings will pop out. You'll, fire it, uh, you'll release it, and it will glide towards its target. Presumably roughly the same range as a JSAL. I'm not entirely sure. We'll just have to find out. I know the JSAL comes in cluster bomb and uh, concrete penetration. Does anyone know if this has these different warheads? No idea. The warhead here just says various gravity bombs. So it's like, don't know. We'll find out. Next, uh, we've been through these guys here. So next we get to our anti-shipping missiles. We've got our 802 AK and our 802 AKG. We can carry two of them. Um, what we will do in a minute is look at this. This is the uh, official uh, symbology from the uh, from Decca. You can see them there and there. Let's go and have a look in a bit more detail. We've got the 802 there. This is designation YJ83. We actually already have these in DCS. They're what I call the Chinese harpoons. Uh, they're fired by ships at the moment. And they, as far as I can see, are similar and equivalent to... A, uh, a harpoon that we have in DCS at the moment. Uh, subsonic, sea skimming with different terminal options uh, as far as I can see. Otherwise it works the same with its own terminal radar and whatnot and INS uh, until we get that far. Then we've got this other uh, a variant here. We've got a variant uh, called the AKG guys of the 802. I'm going to guess that might actually be a ground attack version. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's the man in the loop missile they were talking about. Mm -hmm. The man in the loop mm -hmm. cruise missile that you steal. Or as automatic attack. Right, yeah. So what we've got is, in um, DCS at the moment, we've got the Harpoon. And we've got the land attack version of the Harpoon, known as Slammer, haven't we, guys? And so I would describe that as a Chinese Harpoon. And I would describe that as a Chinese version of a Slammer, then, I guess. Uh, next, we've got the C701AT. And those four pylons there, these are what we would call the Chinese Mavericks. I mean, how true that statement is, I don't really know, because I just don't know much about the missile at the moment. But if I went to find it, um, so you've got Chinese reporting name, y, uh, uh, YJ7. I should say, would we agree, guys, that everything, or almost everything we looked at in terms of weaponry is China developed? Uh, roughly comparable to the AGM-65 Maverick, um, air-to-surface, EO, optical censored. Um, there's not much to say, really. One thing is, it certainly looks very different. And as far as I'm aware, you're not going to be able to triple mount them like you can with a Maverick, which is a great thing about a Maverick small warhead, right? So cool. Uh, but otherwise, that is that. Now, a little bit faster than the Maverick by the looks of things. Uh, TV guidance, infrared homer, and... Oh, and radar guided as well, apparently. That's going to be an interesting option to have radar guided. Uh, next is, where do we get to? The LD-88. It's very interesting. Again, you can carry two on the same as the, the, the AMRAM pylons, if you like. And this is an interesting piece of kit, if we can find it. Here it is. Uh, it's the LD-10. You'll find it under the PL-12 uh, category, which was the, 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 the AMRAM, the Chinese AMRAM, for you know lack of a better uh, a word. And it's an anti-radiation version of it. So it, it's one of these PL-12s with an anti-radiation uh, seeker head, and it's going to be like the equivalent of... Well, we haven't fully decided yet, but somewhere between, we think, a, an AGM-122 sidearm and an AGM-88 harm. Um, so that remains to be seen, um, what, you know, how effective that is. I'm not going to do any predictions at the moment, we'll just see. Next, we've got the targeting pod. Um, now, for some reason, it shows three. I'm assuming that means it can go either of those three um, uh, thingies. Uh, there's only one targeting pod that we can find, the long eye. If we went to look at the long eye, I haven't found a, much information. Otherwise, feel at here. 
Uh, so it's going to be uh, trying to use equipment to the A and AAQ-14 targeting the Lantern system. The Lantern was the old one, wasn't it, guys? I think what it's saying, actually saying here is it's the, it's the um, equivalent of that series. And in that series, we have Lantern, Tiles, Lightning... Um, so yeah, so it would uh, uh, lightning. I think being the latest, I'm presuming it's going to be the equivalent of the lightning. It certainly looks like a lightning, doesn't it? So it's a targeting pod. Uh, it's almost certainly going to be similar to the lightning pod that we get. A little bit more information in here, uh, not a huge amount. So uh, uh, Chinese lightning pod until we hear different. What we've got next is some fuel tanks, 800 liters, 1100 liters, and it does have a 55,000 pounds. So it is going to be. It remains to be seen. It depends how efficient it is, so I won't say anything yet. Hydra 70. Hydra 70 here. These are, uh, if you like, traditional unguided rockets. Uh, I think they're 70 mil. Find that there. Yeah, they are 70 mil, yeah. Uh, with various warheads, uh, Mark 66, various mod warheads that you can see there. Pong, pong, pong. And uh, it looks from that you can double mount pods on a pylon. It remains to be seen if that's what it actually means, but you may be able to double mount. Then you've got the BRM 1 90, possibly the most interesting weapon here. Now, if we're going to go and find that BRM, so you can have four sets of BRMs. This is something I've never seen before. And finding information on BRM 90, it, it, we found hard 90 mil diameter rockets, but they're not just unguided rockets. Each one of these rockets is guided. Are they laser guided, boys? Uh, yes. So you put your laser on on a from your targeting pod, presumably on your target, and you bung these rockets out. Um, you know what they remind me of? They remind me of the Vickers from the KA50. Because they're kind of rockety, aren't they? Whether they work like that or not, I have absolutely no idea. Uh, we'll have to see how the seeker heads work. Did anyone find any other information on the um, BRM1-90? Yep, again, it remains to be seen. A lot of this stuff we just don't know about at the moment. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But that comes to the end of what we're shown here. Does that mean that the that's all that the JF-17 has in DCS? To be honest, we don't know. We just don't know. So we'll have a quick look at other stuff that we could possibly have in Wikipedia here and on their uh, little drawing that they gave us. So what we're going to just bounce back. Let's look at what we've got here. We've been through all of these already. Uh, the CM-102 anti-radiation missile, we believe that is going to be... That must be the LD-10 then. We've talked about the 802 and the CM-400 uh, AK. Gee, but I don't think we're getting that. That is a supersonic anti-ship missile. As far as I understand, and I stand to be corrected, but it can fly high, or fly at various altitudes, and it's supersonic, like Mach 3 or something like that. And we've not seen anyone say that we're getting this one here. Don't know a great deal about it. As far as I'm aware, we're not getting it, but let me know if you know differently. Under guard, our guard bombs, we've been through them all, except this is an interesting one, the Matra Durandal. And if we go in there... Uh, it's a really interesting weapon. My understanding of Durandal is that uh, they're French, Matra. You drop them, they come down on a parachute, and then a rocket fires, which drives it into the runway or whatever it's trying to blow up, presumably a runway, and then it explodes. Then once it's underneath the runway, it explodes. Is that your understanding of the Durandal, guys? Yep, that sounds like yes, a Durandal. Yes, yeah, penetrating bump. Roger. So, again, we're not sure if we're getting there. We've been through all of these. LS6 is a JSAL. Range extension kit. I haven't figured out what that means, but probably nothing that we're getting. Dual ejection racks. Yes, we're getting, I believe. Countermeasures, obviously, we're getting. Drop tanks, we're getting. Um, we've got the radar. It's a some form of modern airborne pulse stop fire control radar, so similar to the F-16s or whatever. Sternly mounted uh, avionics pods. We've got an ASL iPod here, EOIR targeting system. We assume that means the same as the long eye that we looked at, so that's going to be our targeting pod. And also an external jammer pod, so unlike certain other aircraft this has external jamming pop uh, that's as far as we want to go on wikipedia we've looked at these various weapons so we can go to our last document here here so this is produced by jf-17 team and it's definitely not all of the weapons that the plane's getting because the plane is getting we think the plane is getting from the other document we saw more stuff than this but again everything we're d doing is guesswork here really uh, what we've got here is the uh, the Chinese Sidewinders. We've got the GBUs. We've got the um, 802s. I believe they're the 802s. Uh, the YJ... Oh, God, I'm going to say YJ-13? YJ-83? YJ-83, I think. Drop tank, drop tank, drop tank. We've got the uh, the JSAL, the Chinese JSAL. We've got the pods here. Uh, now, we're not sure if these are the, 90, the 90s or the Hydra 70s. So the BRMs or the Hydra 70s. So let me know what you think. They look like they've got seeker heads on. So probably they're the 90s. 
probably there the 70s we'll see targeting pod the long guy here are the uh ah that's interesting have you noticed that guys the front four are slightly different to the two two rear amram equivalents so at a guess the four at the front are going to be the fox 3 air-to-air -air missiles and at a guess the ones that are slightly further back are going to be what they called the uh i think they called them the ld10 which is the if you like the 122 variant the uh, anti-radar variant I'd hazard a guess that's an anti-radar variant. Here we've got the Chinese Mavericks, which are the uh, YJ-7s. What else haven't we identified? Right, so I'm going to have a wild guess that that is our jammer pod there, which leaves two things that are unidentified. That is unidentified. So let me know what you think that is. Uh, I, we can't work out. Is it a, maybe a dual ejector pod rack for that and that? Doesn't look like it. It looks too big. And then we've got this mighty foe here. Is this like a kind of... BK90 slash glide slash uh, dispenser. We can't work that out. It doesn't appear to be powered. It looks very BK90-ish. And that's as far as we've got. We've literally been studying this for half an hour because we're so busy with other things. That said, we are looking forward to it coming. We've got some screenshots of uh, the cockpit to have a look around, guys. Stuff like that. Okay, so I've just gone to Google. Other search engines are available. We've gone JF17 DCS. to took the cockpit. The first thing is... It looks kind of crap, like graphics, or is that me, guys? Is that me being picky? Am I being picky? It just looks untextured, some of it. Uh, yeah, it, looks, it looks like a model rather than... But you look at the real one, and yeah, it's got those grey bits, but it doesn't doesn't look un... Roger, Roger. Um, okay, that remains to be seen. I mean, look at that. Looks kind of crap, to be honest. That looks kind of crap. Oh, don't be crap. Don't be crap. That's a real one. And to be honest, the real one looks kind of crap as well. And when I say crap, I'm talking just the graphics look a bit iffy, you know? Uh, and it may be me having it completely wrong. If I go to, like, this, this is this is the free A4 Skyhawk. That looks excellent. That looks like, you know, movie quality. I go to the JF-17. looks kind of shitty. However, you know, we're obviously very... You know, I I don't really know what I'm talking about at the moment, obviously. That, I think that's real. Um, yeah, so it looks like you've got three big digital screens, guys. Okay, let's not worry too much about the, um, the, the quality at the moment then, because these could be old pictures when they were texturing it and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So I'm not, yeah. not going to worry too much. Um, it looks like what you've got is three whomping way MFDs, a basic UFC, and I can't. I haven't seen a single picture looking down at the console, so I can't see what the console. Ah, oh, there's one. Right, I've got to found a full one, guys. Uh, this isn't. Um, uh, I don't know what this is. This is like, just like the real official simulator or something. Consoles look mm, actually quite simple. Uh, you got a few knobs and stuff either side. Similar, uh, similar to an F16, I'd say. Quite well laid out. Uh, auxiliary panel left, auxiliary panel right. To be honest, similar to the F-16. And then you've got your three screens, your three MFDs. Um, now, the interesting thing is your ADI. You've got no flight instruments. I've just realized you've got no flight instruments. Your flight instruments are on your MFDs. Does that freak anyone out a bit? Well, electrical failure is going to be fun. Because that's yeah, the whole idea of having steam gauges is if you, you know, you get a short, then then you can use your steam gauges. <laughs> I'm guessing it has a redundancy. Like, if one screen goes down, you can use another screen. They're not interlinked or something like that. Probably something uh, like that, or how... Newer aircraft are like that now. I hope it's got a semi-decent damage model as well. It just doesn't explode or, you know, well, I want it to have well, some failures so at least to get hit by some... Our understanding is, and this is just our understanding, this is not official, but we're guessing that Wagner rushed the F-16 to get ahead of this, to, to gather sales for the F-16 and, you know, free market capitalism. That's the kind of thing you have to do. Um, and, and this probably feels, seems like they haven't rushed it, more like the Tomcat. They took the time, waiting until, until the end, and they're going to uh, probably have it fully working. However, as ever, uh, I stand to be completely corrected. So we'll see. Um, we'll see. But the cockpit's not too bad. I get scared off by cockpits. And those MFDs do look a little bit scary to me. But I guess the proof's in the pudding. Got a little DED there. It doesn't look that bad. We'll see. And as it is a small, light, cheap fighter, 
I'm guessing it's. I didn't actually see the price, but I'm going to guess half that. the price of an F16. Yeah, so it's what 40 mil or something like that. <laughs> Might even be less. Yeah. So um, and because it's a, uh, hopefully it'll be relatively simple. Um, uh, I really can't be asked to learn another F14 at the moment. Um, yeah, stuff down there, warning lights down there. Uh, maybe a clock there. I, uh, God knows, but no flight instruments. First plane I've ever going to have flown without flight instruments. Hotas looks. Not dissimilar to an F-16, looks like a bit of a rip-off actually, at least on the left side. Uh, Wikipedia says $15 million a unit. Wow, that's cheap! An F-16 is like 90 mil, guys. It's like a quarter of an F-16. Third? No, a fifth, an eighth, a ninth. <laughs> and, to be fair, it only looks, like I said, about 15 to 30% worse than an F-16 from what we've seen in figures. So... This could be the bargain of the century, kind of grip and bargain of the century type thing, couldn't it, guys? How interesting. J17. J17 shit, yo. It's looking good so far. So far. It looks interesting. Let's have a look at the HUD. Just a normal... You know what? That is just the F-16 HUD, isn't it? Literally. Literally, that is the F-16 HUD. In fact, I'm actually looking at an F-16. No, JF-17. Hmm. Cool. It's okay, guys. A bit weird that it's coming out right next to the F-16 and they're like kind of the same plane but i guess we'll see how it goes uh okay i mean that's a, a lot of that speculation and and guessing and stuff like that but it's the best i can do at the moment we just haven't got the time to look into it. any further further stuff you guys want to add before i sign off on the jf17 thunder it's got out to ground radar oh the only for ground to ground radar i've had so far is the vegan yep has anyone actually ever used a Vigan air to ground radar other than showing it off when they're doing a tutorial? You can use it to find uh, ground targets. You just need to mess around with some shit. Right, I'm going to sign off there, guys. That's, it's coming in four days, so we'll see how it is. Uh, and goodbye.